Good morning. It is 6 a.m. and we are now on the road. We've left our hotel in Sur and are headed to Muscat International Airport, which means that this is our last morning in Oman. It's been such a good time. I'm actually a little bit disappointed to be leaving, if I'm honest. I think I I kind of had an idea that like Oman was going to be a nice place to visit, but I just had no idea that we would see so many incredibly unique things here. This is actually a bit of a hidden gem. I don't think enough people know just how good this really is. And I think definitely the other part to it is like, yeah, Muscat is lovely, but it is vast and so is the rest of this country. And genuinely the best way to see it all is if you hire a car. I genuinely think if we didn't have that, then we wouldn't have had the experience we have had. Because there's so many different areas of interest and natural beauty that you would really miss out on it if you didn't have your own means of transportation. Yeah, because I don't think their public transport system is developed enough that you could do it without your own car. No, but I think genuinely, like we've had some of probably the most unique experiences here than we've had in pretty much every other country we've visited up to now, don't you think? For sure. I'm going to say something a little controversial and I don't even know if it makes sense. I have had some of the best individual experiences and days here. Mm. I absolutely loved the mosque in Muscat. I thought that the fort we saw in Bala and the abandoned village in Alhamra were just so unique, never done that before. Same with Bima Sinkhole and especially Wadi Shab. Such unique and new experiences and I absolutely loved those days. And so for me, the parts of the country were greater than the country as a whole. And how that makes any sense, I don't know, because you're like, well, those parts make up the whole. But I don't know, that's just my feeling on the matter. But yeah, we've had a great time because it's been city in Muscat, history close to Nizwa, and nature in Sur. So it's had it all. I think. We, we have had a discussion about this though and I think it was just because like we've just come from the UAE and more specifically Dubai which we kind of just both took a look at it's like yeah we could see ourselves living here whereas this is still like an amazing country but do we think we could live here probably not in the same way so I think like in terms of kind of the debate of like is this a great country to visit versus is this one we can live in then we think this is just an amazing one to visit because of each of the unique experiences right that probably makes sense honestly if you are going to be kind of around this part of the world or if you just fancy like a really unique trip and you have the time mm -hmm. this is the place like this is unlike anywhere that I personally have ever visited. Um, and this is considering the fact that we have already gone through multiple parts of the Middle East already. And so if you really want to kind of even go beyond what you know of the Middle East and you haven't been to Oman yet, you ought to come here.
in a new lounge. So of course it's that time again where we rate the lounges. This one is the Prime Class Lounge in Muscat Airport. It is lovely, but how does it stack up against the other ones we've been to so far? We are here at breakfast time and they have a real variety of hot and cold food. There is food that would be more typical of North America, Europe, Asia, India, and of course the Middle East. The food is also delicious. So with that, we're giving it a nine out of 10. On the drinks front, then as ever, you have a lot of premium top shelf spirits and seemingly a very good wine selection. The only thing that lets this down slightly is that the only beer available was cans of Budweiser. There weren't any options available on tap as we have seen in some of the better lounges. But that is only talking about the alcoholic portion of it. Otherwise, there's a very nice selection of coffee options, tea options, a bunch of juices that you can go for. And they also do their own like detox water with lemon and mint included, as well as all of your usual sodas. So with that, then we're gonna give this one an eight. As for the cleanliness of this lounge, this place is spotless. So with that, we're giving it a nine out of 10. On the comfort front, as with most of the top lounges that we've been in, there is a plethora of different seating options. We've taken an opportunity to sit in some of them and they are all plush, extremely relaxing. So with that, we're gonna give that a nine. Where do I even start with amenities in this lounge? Of course, they have food, they have drinks, they have a dining area, they have multiple lounge areas, but they also have sleeping rooms, which are like gorgeous hotel suites. In addition, they have your typical Wi-Fi. They have charging ports everywhere. They have two pool tables. They have two foosball tables. They have a sport viewing room and they have a cinema. And those are just the amenities that we know of. So with that, we're giving this a nine out of 10. The only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is because we're leaving room for some of the business and first class lounges that hopefully we get to experience one day. But I can imagine that this might even compete with some of them. So in totting all of that up, then that makes this a 44 and pushes this to be the best lounge that we have been in so far. just arrived in Abu Dhabi and are currently waiting for the gate to be displayed for our next flight. But that was so bumpy, that landing. Yeah, it's taken us, well, I think we're still trying to recover from it a little bit because that got very turbulent very quickly. I don't really get travel sick, but my stomach and head. Oh. Same, same. But yeah, our gate's going to be shown in about five minutes, so then <laughs> towards our next flight.
we have made it. I think a lot of people avoid coming to India because they're afraid of the visa process, but they now have a new e-visa that you can do online. The paperwork portion of it is a little bit complex and lengthy. I would a lot about an hour, but there's a really good accompanying guide that takes you through how to do it step by step. And you can apply up to 30 days in advance and you have 30 days to get to India and start your 30 day tourist visa from there. So we applied June 12th, we've arrived July 11th, and now we have until August 10th to stay here. But the immigration officer was a little bit confused because we applied the full 30 days in advance and only arrived on the 30th day. And he didn't realize that you have the 30 days to arrive once it's been approved. And then you have actually 30 days in the country. But his colleague was totally knowledgeable about the new e-visa and he sorted us right out. It turns out that actually the turnaround time is so much better as a result of the e-visa than the old paper visas that you needed to get. Historically, we've heard of people who've been waiting for weeks upon end in order to be able to be given entry into the country. But actually, we applied for the e-visa. I think we got a, got a response back within the space of 24 hours. It was amazing. Absolutely. And getting to the hotel from the airport was very simple. There was a metro that takes you right to New Delhi station. It cost us 120 Indian rupees, which is just under $2 Canadian. And where we're staying was maybe a 10 minute walk from the railway station. Yeah, it was a little bit of a complicated process to get from the station to here. There was a railway bridge that Apparently we weren't meant to take, but we could take, and blah, 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 blah. But anyway... It was more of a hassle to get out of the station. The rest of it was quite easy to navigate. Exactly. And so, actually, the walk ended up being maybe about 10 minutes in total, once we knew how to get through the station. But that is it. It is quite late in the evening now, so we're going to turn in. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.